Frau Costa äh, hat den Bericht zur Einrichtung des Programms Kreatives Europa vorgelegt. Ich rufe auf den Gesamttext Block Nummer 1. Wer ist dafür? Wer ist dagegen? Wer enthält sich? Das ist angenommen. Damit ist der Block Nummer 2 hinfällig. Ich lasse Abstimmung über den so geänderten Vorschlag der Kommission. Wer ist dafür? Wer ist dagegen? Wer enthält sich? Das ist angenommen. Die legislative Entschließung in namentlicher Abstimmung die ist eröffnet. Haben alle abgestimmt? Das ist der Fall. Die Abstimmung ist geschlossen und angenommen. Herzlichen Glückwunsch an den Berichterstatter, an die Berichterstatterin, Frau Costa. Entschuldige. Let me say that this is great news. Uh, the overwhelming um, majority of the Parliament voted in favour of Creative Europe, and this is uh, excellent news for the film industry, for the European culture, and for the millions of people like us who love culture. <laughs> So I would like to thank the European Parliament for the great support and also for the cooperation throughout the process, and especially Silvia Costa for uh, her uh, great uh, work. I would also like to thank the cultural and creative sector, because they have been also very important players in this process, because uh, without their input, their, uh, uh, their advice as to what they need uh, in these sectors, we would not be in a position to put up a good proposal. So, and I'm also very pleased that we have achieved a 9% increase also for this program, despite the fact that the European budget in general has been decreased. 1.46 billion budget, which was agreed, will allow us to provide funding for at least 250,000 artists and cultural professionals. 2,000 cinemas, which show predominantly European films, will be assisted. We will be able to support the development of about 800 European films. 4,500 books will be uh, translated in other languages so that people can learn each other's uh, culture. And, uh, uh, well, this is, I believe, a great, great work. The program will boost synergies between the audiovisual and the cultural sector because all these sectors face the same challenges, globalization, digitization, the fragmentation of the market. But at the same time, we keep them separate under two separate sub-programs because they have also their specific needs, which we need to address. In addition, from 2016 onwards, we will launch the new financial guarantee facility, which will enable a small cultural and creative businesses to access credit. This is one of the big demands from these <coughs> cultural and creative SMEs. We shall devote 120 million euros for this uh, strand, with which we hope that they will get access to about 750 million euros loans. So this will help, I believe, the small and creative businesses. Creative Europe builds on the experience and success of the existing culture and media programs. It will continue to enable cultural and audiovisual professionals to operate transnationally, to promote the cross-border circulation of cultural and creative works. It will uh, safeguard cultural and linguistic diversity and will strengthen policy cooperation to foster innovation, audience building and new business models. Now, you may ask me why I believe that uh, these uh, sectors need our support. First of all, I believe for their intrinsic value. We have to recognize that this, that culture, has an intrinsic value as a public good. And especially in times of crisis, I think this is very important because it helps 
to the social cohesion of our societies. But in addition to that, research clearly shows the strong growth potential of the cultural and creative sectors. The cultural and creative sectors play a major role in Europe's economy. They account for about 4.5% of, of the GDP of Europe, and they employ about 8 million people. So this is not to be underestimated, especially in times of crisis. The numbers are higher, of course, if we take into account the spillover effects to other sectors, like tourism, like regional development, all this, very, very important. So I believe that uh, Creative Europe will enable the sectors to create even more new jobs and to increase their contribution to the EU economy. Creative Europe will do that by helping to overcome the barriers hindering creative development, innovation, and social cohesion. It will help the cultural and creative sectors to address the challenges that I mentioned, globalization, digitization, market fragmentation. But it will also enable them to seize the opportunities and internationalize their careers so that both they and their audiences benefit from digital shift. There is a very clear need for the sectors to get greater access to private funding. So I am pleased that the Parliament supported our proposal to launch the new financial guarantee facility. This will be managed by the European Investment Fund and will be a self-sustained fund. Let me underline that the guarantee facility does not replace grants. It will be an additional to grants. Indeed, we are increasing the level of grants for cultural and creative sectors compared with the previous funding period, while the allocation of the guarantee facility, which, as I said, represents 120 million for the seven years, it represents only 8% of the overall budget for Creative Europe. And I am pleased that Creative Europe will have a strong international dimension. This is also in line with the commitments to the UNESCO Convention on Cultural Diversity and our ambition to increase cooperation and intercultural dialogue with third countries. To this end, Creative Europe will be open to participation by neighboring countries to promote the distribution of European cultural works worldwide and vice versa. I am convinced, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that the Creative Europe program adopted today will provide vital leverage, investment and funding. It will generate considerable benefits for citizens and contribute to the Europe 2020 strategy for sustainable jobs and growth. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Vasiliou.